Hello guys in today's episode, before we begin make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out when we post, never touch your truck again, you got it neighbor, I posted this on the Ata sub but many people were saying it is MC and to post it here too, I, 59M, live in a major city in Ontario, Canada, I live in a small subdivision and have 5 neighbors total on my street, for the past few years during the winter when we're getting a lot of snow or a bad storms, as I'm leaving for my overnight shift at around 8-9 pm I'll put my wife's windshield wipers up on her car and do a quick walk around to my other 5 neighbors and put their windshield wipers up on their cars, obviously not if they're outside or something but if it looks like they're in for the night, many of them forget to do this, as many of them have children and it typically slips their mind, and their wipers will be frozen to their car in the morning, it's just something nice I like to do to look out for my neighbors, they're all always grateful of this and thank me for it, many of them started doing it too and there will be nights where I'll forget to put mine and my wife's up, and in the morning one of the neighbors has done it for us, anyway recently one of our neighbors moved and a new family moved in as of last week, it's a young couple and their two young children, the other night I was leaving for my overnight shift at around 9 pm, it was snowing really heavy and we were supposed to be getting almost 30 centimeters of snow and it was freezing out, so I put my wife's wipers up and do my usual quick walk around to the other neighbors, I was hesitant when I reached my new neighbors house, as I've only introduced myself once, but did it anyway, as I was putting the second wiper up on their pickup truck the husband came charging out of his front door yelling hey what's the fck are you doing to my truck, I tried to explain to him I was just putting his wipers up to help him, he continued to scream at me to get the hell off my property and don't touch my shit again, the wife then came out and started yelling at me too, I apologized and started walking away, some of my other neighbors heard the commotion and came outside to see what was happening, they tried explaining to him too that it's just something we do, both of them wasn't having it, fast forward to this morning, I'm arriving home from my overnight shift and as I'm walking in I see the wife of this couple struggling outside to break the ice off the windshield wipers of the truck, guess she was trying to take her kids to school and the wipers were frozen solid on the car, she sees me and yells over hey there, do you mind giving me a hand please, I look over to her and yell back no sorry, thought I was to never touch your shit again mom and walked back inside, she yelled back at me wow ah, told my wife about this, she thinks I should have helped her because she was just trying to get her kids to school, I disagree as I was just following what they told me. Topsy Turvy reposting my story originally submitted to R, suddenly sugar daddy, I started dating a girl about 7 years ago, when we met she was getting up on her feet and trying to find her way in life, I let my imagination take over and started envisioning her potential and what kind of life we would have together, I had never had the feeling of disarmed punch drunk love that I had for her, and that probably clouded my judgment, throughout our time together she would reach out and ask for money for things a broken bar repairing a car, paying a bill, etc, we were getting closer the longer we dated, and I would always help her assuming that I was making an investment in both of our lives by helping her through a period of instability, in all I probably gave her about $15,000, after about 4 years of this I finally popped the question, she accepted and we were married after a brief engagement, about 6 months into our marriage, she told me she had been having car trouble and needed about $2,000 for the repair, this struck me as a bit odd a broken bar, by that time I was more than familiar with her vehicle and knew her explanation for what the issue was didn't make sense, one evening after she went to sleep I went and had a look at the part of the car she had said was faulty, no issue, this set off alarms, I grabbed her phone and, on a hunch, typed in the amount she had asked for and it returned a text message with a guy she had previously dated, apparently he had reached out and asked for help repairing his car, 
And lo and behold he had asked for the same amount she had requested from me. My stomach turned as the thought entered my mind that maybe I had subsidized other of this guy's expenses across the time I had dated my wife. As I read through the messages further I realized that this guy was the Lester Diamond to my Sam Rothstein, and I had been played like a fool. Look up that reference if you're not familiar. I had spent my entire relationship as a proxy sugar daddy. I thought on this for a few weeks and tried to figure out what to do next. These sacrifices were not insignificant to me a broken bar I had been working as a surgical resident for much of our courtship making very little money and working long hours to form a strong, solid foundation for our future. This was devastating, and I realized that I couldn't reconcile the situation. Once I had cooled down I waited for an evening my wife went to bed early and I got into her phone. I caught up on the most recent messages she and her paramour had sent one another. Then I initiated a conversation with him. I posed as her and told him she had been drinking. She is a recovering alcoholic, and that she needed to get some things off her chest. I didn't go overboard, but I did send messages to the effect that she was not over him and that her affections had grown since marrying me. I all but teed him up to move in for a relationship with her. I then abruptly ended the chat and asked that we not talk about the conversation again in order to avoid furthering her relapse but that we both keep in mind what we had spoken about and see if we could make a life together work. I then deleted the texts from her phone and hoped the two would proceed forward together. They did. I kept an eye on the texts for the next few months and progressively saw things heat up between them until it looked like she was committed to leaving me. We didn't have many assets together at the time as I was still finishing a surgical residency, so I knew the divorce would be quick and painless and that we would go our separate ways and she would start a new life with the guy whose underachievements I had been funding. So I filed for divorce and had her served papers. I was generous with the $10,000 in assets between us in order to make the split as quick as possible and went on our ways to begin life anew. And you'd think that is the end of the story, right? Oh no. Friend a broken bar you see? Mama didn't raise a cuck. In our state, not only our assets separated upon marital severance, but so our debts. And medical school is fucking expensive ear broken bar really expensive ear broken bar a quarter of a million dollars expensive. So, the bitch ended up with a parting gift of about $125,000 of my student loans. And guess who she shotgun married two months after our divorce. Fortunately for her she'll only have to pay half of that amount, because if history does indeed repeat itself, he'll be paying the other half once their marriage ends as well. It was all I could do to not send them a piggy bank as a wedding gift, best $15,000 I ever spent. Tifu by flashing my neighbors with Christmas lights the whole time I was on a trip so my wife and I were leaving in a hurry for a trip a few days ago across a few state lines. A few nights out of town, easy, settled in the cats with some extra food, set up my sister to check on M. Cool. We left rushed trying to avoid the weather. 30 minutes later we realized we forgot something essential and came back. We realized when we got to the house the bad weather has already knocked out the power. We grabbed what we needed and raced back out of there headed in the opposite direction of the downpour. My sister texts me and gives me some excuse on why she can't check on the cats because she got to my house and didn't have the key so we were expecting them to be a little skittish when we got home. What I was not expecting was to pull up in the middle of the night to our Christmas lights strobing constantly in every color at the highest brightness. These things were bright too. During Christmas I think we had them at like 70% and on a timer to cut off after like 9 p.m. 500 feet of color changing lights spread across the whole front of our house. I was mortified. I jumped out of the car and immediately ran inside and cut them off. One neighbor outside literally clapped. Yeah haha everyone clapped, but no really, apparently these lights have been blaring the demo setting ever since the power cut out. Several full nights of an obnoxious light show at all hours. See, they have a remote. 
that has been set to off for months. The power failure apparently turned them off and this is what it defaulted to when it came back up the demo mode that stobes and pulses unpredictability as it cycles through every setting and color. A similar thing happened with the living room lights, usually smart lights that we turn off with voice commands but after a power failure, on, just on by default, our poor neighbors probably assumed we were home, might have even knocked. I'm so embarrassed. My sister definitely lied about dropping by. My cats were fine, but definitely confused. Anyway don't forget to unplug your smart crap before leaving for an extended period of time because sometimes it will declare war on your neighborhood. TL Doctor My Smart House declared war on the neighborhood putting on the bright and unpredictable light show right after we left for a trip. Thanks for sticking around till the end don't forget to subscribe for more like this.